Hello everyone. Welcome back to Unikaksha's YouTube channel. This is Ashwini from Unikaksha. Friends, data abstraction or data hiding is considered as a very important feature of any object-oriented programming language. So, uh, in my last video, I have explained you about the data abstraction in Java. We have learned about the abstract methods and how the implementation part can be done by using the Java programming language. Now today, moving further, we will try to understand the second way of data hiding that is nothing but the interfaces. So in this video, I am going to discuss with you about the Java interfaces. In this video, we will be discussing about some introductory parts related to interface. Then we will understand why interface can be used or why it is important. Next, we will see the implementation part of interfaces where we will see the syntax of writing interfaces and then we will uh, learn how interfaces will work along with the example. So let's get started with the introductory part. So every programming language uh, which is supporting for the object oriented concepts is going to support for data hiding mechanism. And nowadays in the real world, data hiding mechanism is very much important because it is not necessary to give the complete information or every information to the user. Instead of that, we can only provide the required information which is required by the user. So uh, ultimately it provides you huge, uh, huge security of your data. In my last video, I have explained you about the need of data abstraction and how Java is going to support for the data abstraction, that is data hiding. In today's video, I'm going to explain you about the interfaces. So basically, interface is nothing but it is considered as a blueprint or template of your class. So it is similar to the class, but there are some kind of differences. So the main difference is it is going to use the static constants and abstract methods only. Whereas in class, we are including almost everything like variable declaration, then methods, non-abstract and abstract methods. So we are going to write everything there. Now, in case of interfaces, we are not going to write uh, or include anything else uh, other than static constants and abstract methods. In interfaces, we can write only abstract methods. That is, no definition part of that method is included or method is not having body or implementation part there. The class which is implementing the interface should be abstract. Otherwise, we uh, need to define all the methods of interface in the class again. So this is all about the interface. Now let's consider the real time example of interfaces. So <clears throat> you can think about the bank account or you can think about the credit card. Now I'll give you one example uh, related to this here. Suppose you went uh, to a shop for purchasing something and uh, you have selected the product there and now you are trying to uh, pay the amount. Now the uh, shopkeeper told you that the uh, they are going to accept only dollars or pounds. But now, as you are having a cash in rupees, it is not possible for you to interact and perform the transaction. Okay, so or simply if you are using a simple debit card, then also it is not possible for you to uh, uh, do this international payment or do this kind of payment. The Now this is the first scenario. Now consider the second scenario. In second scenario, suppose you have a credit card and you again you are trying to pay the bill. Uh, at first shop you are trying to pay the bill in rupees so it is worked. In second shop you are trying to pay the bill in dollars so the same credit card you can use for uh, performing this kind of transaction. So the credit card is same, but you are performing the transaction in different ways. Like for example, you are uh, from your account, rupees are debited and uh, in the uh, shopkeeper's account, the dollars are credited like this. So this is here, this is the consideration of interface. In interfaces, 
uh, the user who is accessing interface cannot have access to the implementation part of method which is included in the interface. But the user who is trying to access the methods or the another class where the methods are implemented, they, uh, the user can access the implementation part. It means the data extraction can be done here. So the required data, which is required by the particular user that is only given to the, uh, that specific user here. Now, the next thing is why Java is going to provide this facility of interfaces or why it can be used. So there are mainly three reasons behind this. The very first thing is you can achieve the data abstraction. So that is again, most important as I already told you. The second thing is by uh, using the interface, uh, it is going to, Java is going to support for the multiple inheritance. So Java is not directly supporting for the multiple inheritance as um, it is going to create the ambiguity. So it is not directly using the multiple inheritance in the program, but we can achieve the feature of multiple inheritance by using the uh, functionality or by using the uh, interfaces. It is used to achieve the loose coupling. Now, what is the meaning of loose coupling? It is nothing but there is a, a very small dependency of uh, all, uh, all the, um, what we can say, all the uh, concepts with each other. So loose uh, coupling is again, most important thing. Or you can say weak dependency of each and every part with each other. This is the syntax for writing the interfaces. So you have to declare the interfaces by using interface keyword. So interface and interface name. Interface name can be anything which you uh, can give to variable or class like that. The same rules are applicable here. And inside the interfaces, you are just going to include the abstract methods and the uh, static variables or static uh, constants you are going to include there. So this is the syntax of your interfaces. Now, moving with the example, let's try to understand how interfaces will work. So here I have uh, written one program. Name of the program is testinterface.java. So here I am going to include the program uh, where uh, two different banks are included and uh, uh, one method is written, which is uh, uh, considered as abstract method. So interface, name of the interface is bank account. And inside that, I have created one method that is in, uh, interest rate. This is the method, but it is just declared in the bank account interface and no implementation or body of the method is written there. So this is how we can declare the interfaces or define the interfaces. Now here two classes I have written, one class that is SBI and second class that is HDFC. So here we are going to use keyword implements for defining the interfaces and not the extends keyword is used here, which we are going to use in the uh, in inheritance part for extending the class or for inheriting the class. So here I'm going to use the keyword that is implements. So class SBI, it is implemented from bank account interface. Bank account is the interface. So by default, we can access this method here and I'm going to return something from this method. Now, the second class I have defined in the same way, which is implementing from the bank account interface. And simply here, we are going to return uh, some value again. Now, the next thing that is, we are going to write class test interface. Test interface is the class uh, in which we are going to include the main method. So here I have included public static void main. This is the main method. And inside the main method, what I have done is I have created object of this bank account. And through that, I'm going to call this SBI method. So uh, this is, sorry, the SBI class. So this is, this can be called here and it is going to call the uh, interest rate method of SBI. Though this method is written in 
HDFC as well and SBI as well. So if simply you are going to use the uh, multiple inheritance like in C++, then there was causing some kind of ambiguity because um, uh, because uh, the compiler gets confused about which kind of method or which uh, method should be called because the names are same. But here to avoid that ambiguity, we are working like this. So this is how it is going to call the um, method which is available uh, in this particular class by using this particular way. So when we are trying to execute this, then it will call the inter interest rate method from SBI class. Let's check this. So I'm going to compile this program here. It has been compiled and it, then I'm going to execute this. So it is going to show you the bank interest rate uh, of SBI and then it is going to show you the value which is returned by this particular method. So this is how the interfaces can work or this is the simple way to write the interfaces. So this was the simple introduction about the Java interfaces. In my last video, I have explained you about the data abstraction in Java in that I have explained the abstract methods along with the example. And this is the second way of uh, uh, achieving the data abstraction that is by writing the interfaces. So uh, here also in today's video, I have a, a tried to explain you about the interfaces along with the example. I hope you got a clear idea about the data abstraction in Java and uh, uh, the implementation part of interfaces and abstract methods. So uh, to know more about such kind of Im important uh, concepts in programming language, that is Java programming language, stay tuned with us at Unikaksha. Till then, thank you so much.